Hi friends, it's Monica and let's tear this rank some book couples today. So I actually got this idea from a commenter, uh, Madison, who suggested to make this video. And it was something I hadn't thought of before and I thought it was a perfect video for February with it being a romantic month and with Valentine's Day coming up. But this video will be uploaded after Valentine's Day, but I still think it's quite fitting. Before you continue on watching, just a fair bit of warning, there will be spoilers for any books I'm talking about and who ends up with who. I mainly have a young adult books on this list, and I also tossed in some new adult and adult titles or couples. Let's just get to it. So I made up my own category, so let's just go over them. So starting from the top, we have OTP, which means one true pairing, and this is like the best and perfect couple that I think would belong to this category. And then the next category we have is beautiful pairing. I really enjoy this couple and I really like how they interact with each other and their connection and how they came to be, but they're just not my favorite couples. So that's beautiful pairing. Then in the middle, we have a good enough. So these are the couples that I think balance each other out but maybe one side of the couple that character I didn't really particularly like, but um, I still like the two of them together. And the fourth category I have here is mediocre or toxic, but still shippable. This one was based on whether the couple is just not it for me, like they're not good enough, but they're like mm, stable enough. like. They'll have a happy life together. <laughs> this category toxic but still shippable. So like with all the morally gray characters that we are seeing in YA. So basically the main character being shipped with someone that's not particularly right for them, but we still can't help but ship them together. So that's my toxic but still shippable <laughs> category here. And then the last one is trash this ship. So this one is just like a couple that I did not really enjoy and I just thought maybe they were a little bit boring even and I'm like, so just trash the ship <laughs> so my first one here is um, Aelin and Rowan from Throne of Glass so with this pairing, I really liked their interactions and pretty much the slow buildup of their relationship the training sequences they had together and the tension so it's honestly like a it's an otp for me it's one true pairing because i remember reading throughout the throne class series that every time they were separated and then they reunited it was like watching a movie of like a couple running across a field towards each other and i just love them so they're my first otp okay so the next pairing i have here is alina and the darkling so they are from the Shadow and Bone series, and I'm quite sure everyone knows about the TV show by now. But Alina and the Darkling, they have some questionable things going on in their relationship. And with Alina, I know who she ends up with in the books and that I wasn't particularly happy about that. The Darkling isn't the best character to be with in a relationship, so I'm kind of... Eh, I'm gonna be putting him... putting this pairing in toxic but still shippable. And like, if I'm putting a couple into this category, it doesn't mean that I hate the couple, it's just that I'm just acknowledging that it's not maybe the best pairing ever in terms of reality, but I seriously enjoyed their chemistry on screen and in the books because it was just so... It was basically like I'm um, rooting for the villain to be shipped with the main character. Anyways, let's just keep on going. So we do have Alina and Mal here. So with Alina Mal, I didn't particularly enjoy their relationship. Like I I really like the childhood to lovers trope, but with Alina Mal, I feel like their chemistry fell flat in the book and then she ended up with him. But I understand why she chose him and how she just ended up wanting to have a normal life. Is it good enough? It's good enough for the character, but is it good for, good enough for me? I'm gonna see it's mediocre, and yes, they're next to Alina and the Darkling. Yeah, it's mediocre for me, so 
Sorry, Mel. <laughs> okay, so this next couple I have here is from the Mortal Instruments series. This is Izzy or Isabella and Simon. So these two has an interesting path to their relationship. They're like friends to lovers and I really enjoy how they're really sweet with each other. I guess also based on the TV show, they don't really interact as much, but in the books, they're good enough for me. Okay, we have another Immortal Instruments couple here. We have Jason and Clary. So these two have a, a questionable start to their relationship. With this couple, they grow to learn of each other and of their stories and Jace helps Clary a lot here and ultimately I do enjoy their relationship so I am going to put them in good enough then we have a couple from Divergent they are Triss and Four so Divergent is a series I read quite a while ago and the movie franchise was kind of mediocre Triss is a bit annoying to me but I really love Four I'm going to say they are either mediocre or good enough for me. Just based off the books and what I remember from the books is Tris and Four, they always had the student and teacher vibes. Well, like he's only two years older than her in the, in the books. They're not the most intense couple I've encountered. Maybe they're good enough. Yeah, they're good enough. Yeah, they're not really on the level of mediocre. Like I still like how they ended up together and how they fight for each other. So this is from a Court of Thorns and Roses, or from their particular book, Cassia Nesta, A Court of Silver Flames. When I first saw Cassia and Nesta on the page together and like they first met, that scene was really nice to read because you could immediately sense like there's tension there and that there's a sort of chemistry there that you want to dive in deeper. And if you haven't read, like I think it's like a bonus chapter from A Court of Mist and Fury, there's like a scene with um, Cassie and Nesta where Cassie visits Nesta and to like deliver a message and that scene is just pretty much like a kick off to like okay these two will end up together and with their book that just came out last year it was a really nice way of learning about Cassie and and Nesta's own personal growth and how they grow together and kind of heal from the effects of the war and I really enjoy them so they're 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 OTP for me so this one is from the kingdom of the wicked um this is Wrath and Amelia so Wrath is the demon prince and Amelia is a witch and these two Again, right off the bat, you see the chemistry that they have with each other and it's enemies to lovers because Wrath is not really looking to be with a witch but throughout the second book, you see a lot more romantic tension building up so I do think with their chemistry and just based on the couple themselves Mila and Wrath, they're, they're good enough maybe they could be moved up to beautiful pairing but I just feel like I, I want to wait out until the last book comes out in the series so next we have Hunger Games couples so we have Katniss and Gale first here. It's kind of cut off, but it's Katniss and Gale. These two, um, I really liked how, of course, they were childhood friends and they go through the fall of District 12 and they go on to the revolution. They're separated a lot of the time in the books, but I think I still, I still really like them together. So I'm going to go with good enough. They don't end up with each other, but I did like them together. And then the next Hunger Games ship we have is Peta and Katniss. So they do end up together in books. I think with the trauma of going through the Hunger Games with each other, Katniss and Peta, they go through so much. And yes, I'm going to put them in beautiful pairing. They go through so much with each other and they end up growing with each other as well. So I really appreciated that throughout the books. And although Peta can be dull at times, so when Peta loses his memories and Katniss is the one who's trying to get him back, Peta's always asking, is this real, not real? And I still remember those scenes and I was like crying. I really enjoyed like their adventures together and pretty much being thrown into a dystopian world and how they overcame everything together. Okay, next we have a adult fantasy book from Sergey Mass. This is Hunt and Bryce. Just based only on the first book. Actually, the second book just released this week. 
I do think they are pretty good together, but I would have liked to see more growth. But then again, only the first book is out. Uh, with Hunt and Bryce, I do think they will end up being together as Endgame. But like following the patterns of like other Sergei Matt's books and how maybe the first couple that we see with the main female character might not end up to be the final couple. And I think with Hunt and Bryce, they will end up together. But for now, I'm just putting them in good enough because things might change in future books. So I did lose some footage here. What I was saying was that Jamie and Claire from Outliner was an automatic OTP for me. I actually never read the books. I've only watched the TV show and I really enjoyed the dramatic moments in the show and the intensity that this couple has. I really enjoyed the extent that both Jamie and Claire went for each other to protect each other and I'm really excited for season 6 that's coming out soon. So yeah, they're OTP. <laughs> so this one is from the Infernal Devices. This is Tessa and Jem. I really enjoyed their journey in the Infernal Devices and then in future books. So Tessa is an interesting character because then she ends up with someone else from the Infernal Devices and then she also gets a chance to live a life with Jem. So I'm gonna say they are, that they're a beautiful couple. Okay, next we have Castile and Poppy from, from Blood and Ash. This is a new adult book and basically with From Ash and Blood, personally like I enjoyed the first book but I don't think I'll be continuing on with the series. So just based on that and I'm gonna put them into mediocre. Okay, so my explanation here. <laughs> With Castile and Poppy, they have immediate connection and tension, but I did not like how Castile would be quite controlling over her. She does grow into her own because of him and also because of her own will. I just didn't like them together. Another reason why was because I just despised how Castile was calling Poppy princess and I, I just don't like that term of endearment doesn't really um, sit well with me. So this next couple is from Six Crows. We have Kaz and Inej. They're a beautiful pairing. <laughs> no hesitation there because they both, again, go through the gang life together. They go through a heist together. And with Kaz being the leader of the Crows or the Dregs, he has a lot of difficulty in connecting with others. And Inej is really patient with him and vice versa. So another couple from the Immortal Instruments we have here Alec and Magnus. Magnus is cut out but I really love them together so they're a beautiful pair. With the growth and everything throughout the books and the doubt from outside sources were against them but they overcome those challenges and they turn out to be a really nice couple in the end. Tamlin and Feyre from A Court of Thorns and Roses. Immediate trash the ship. <laughs> Tamlin's toxic, but he's not shippable with Feyre. I think maybe in the future books, Tamlin might be redeemed, but I'd have no idea how he would be. But with just in speaking with Tamlin and Feyre together, ugh. at first I was like, oh my gosh, who's Tamlin in the first book of Agatar? But then in the end, he ends up being a trash person. <laughs> And then we have the opposite. We have Feyre and Reese from the Avatar series as well. They're OTP. Uh, yeah, they're OTP for me. So Feyre and Reese, they are pretty much like the perfect couple for each other. They're basically like mates and all that. But I really like how they complement each other. They both encourage each other to heal from their past. Okay, next we have Warner and Juliet from the Shatter Me series. So these two... I read the original trilogy quite a while ago, but I remember just loving how Warner was really gentle with Juliet after they learned more of each other. So Warner and Juliet, you're a beautiful pairing. Yeah, you're a beautiful pairing for me. Okay, so this next two couples are from In the Invisible Life of Addie LaRousse with Addie. She has a particular condition that she made a deal with the devil to live forever. But she's invisible to everyone except for 
the person she made a deal with. But then in modern day, she meets Henry. And with Henry, he was boring, but he was stable for her. So with Henry and Addie, just in terms of their coupleness, I think they're, I'm gonna say trash the ship for them. It's just that they connect well for the present Addie. But throughout the book, you do see how Luke and Addie, which is my next couple, it's toxic but shippable, but that there's more, I don't know, chemistry between Luke and Addie. I just didn't find Henry as really likable. Like he was just, his parts were nice to read through, but Henry as a character himself was just really boring to me. Toxic but still shippable for Luke and Addie because Luke is the one who she made the deal with and then manipulates her and yeah, hella toxic. Same with like the Darkling in Alina. Okay, so this next one, Jude and Cardin from the Cruel Prince series. So these two, I'm putting them as a beautiful pairing because they're enemies to lovers. It's really fun to see their interactions with each other and how Cardin and Jude are both considered ruthless people and that they end up together and how they end up together was really fun to read. Edward and Bella from the Twilight series. I shipped them. They're OTP, honestly. Um, I did ship them when I read the book and watching the movies, I was a Edward fan. I rooted for them and they ended up being together. Okay, so this next one is from Throne of Glass. So it's Dorian and Manon. And they're an interesting couple together, but I'm gonna put them as good enough. No, I'm gonna put them in beautiful pairing because Dorian and Manon, they both go through such traumatic events as well. And they managed to find like solace within each other and from what Dorian began as, but who he ends up as at the end of the series, he works well with Manon. So, so um, this is Hazel and Gus from The Fault in Our Stars, and they're a beautiful pairing. They go through such a hard time with each other, with cancer and everything. The way they support one another, they encourage each other to live while they still can. And I really like that, so they're a beautiful pairing. So this next one is Cinder and Kai from the Luna Chronicle series. And yeah, they're good enough for me. Again, I read this one quite a while ago. And with Kai being a prince and then Cinder being kind of like a lost princess, she's Cinderella, so the uh, Cinderella retelling. And they end up together after fighting to save the world. Next, we have Elias and Layla from the Ember and the Ashes series. Again, I have not finished this series. I still have the last book to read, but I really love them together. Actually, they're OTP. Yeah, they're actually OTP for me because they come from such opposite ends of their world. He's, um, Elias is from the Martial Empire and then Layla is a scholar. But then they manage to work together and find that they have a deeper connection than what their world tells them, what is right and wrong. So I really liked that about them. So next we have from two other boys I've loved before, we have Larchine and Peter Kavinsky. I really love them being together and throughout the movies and the books. They're just a really cute couple and they had the fake dating trope which was really fun to read about and watch on screen. So I really enjoyed how they ended up together. We have America and Maxin from the Selection series. Honestly, they're mediocre for me. Like, uh, the Selection series itself was a guilty pleasure series that I read, again, years ago. I really liked the concept of the Selection. I guess America was like, okay, this is my first love, so she just went with Prince Max, and so good for her. But they're mediocre for me. Okay, next we have Will and Tessa. They were going to a beautiful couple. <laughs> so like what I was saying before with um, Jem and Tessa, Will and Tessa, they end up together in the Inferno Devices and they pretty much experience a calm life after battling demons as they do in the Shadowhunters books. I really liked how Will showed his vulnerable side to Tessa. Okay, next we have from the Caraval series, we have Julian and Scarlet our first couple here. I really like Julia and Scarlett. They didn't really have major problems. Yeah, they're like, a, they're good enough for each other. They're a good enough couple overall. And then we have Tessa and Legend. They're also good enough for each other. They're more problematic, I think. 
Um, there was more like a love triangle with Tessa, Legend, and Jax. And Legend, of course, won that love triangle with Tessa. But like the journey in the Care Book series, it was really enjoyable to read about them and their dynamic together. Same with Julian and Scarlett. Okay, last but not least, we have Audrey Rose and Thomas from the Stalking, Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Oh, <laughs> mediocre for me. I think it's mainly based on the fact that with Audrey Rose and Thomas, they have a banter-like relationship, but I think at the end of the day, it wasn't anything special. And I think another reason why they're mediocre for me is that their relationship was always meant to be, you know? It was like always obvious that they would end up together. There wasn't anything surprising about them ending up with each other. It was just that they were navigating crimes together and such. So those are all the couples from my tier rank listing. I hope you all enjoyed watching it. And don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.